before moving on, we need to have a really good grasp of how Git work internally. So I've made another experiment. I create another file, readme2.markdown, with the very same content of the first file. So these are these two files with the same content. If I'm going to do another git hash object with a new file, and I ask git to write this new file content to the internal database, I've got the very same file name of the previous file. That's because I have two files with identical content and since Git internal database does not anything else than taking the content of a file, taking a stream of bytes and put a header, compress and create a file with the name the, uh, calculated by the hash of the content of the file, this implies that if I have two files with the very same content and I ask Git to save the content of the file into internal database, I will have the same result file. If you want to explore a little bit more what's inside the file, I've uh, created a small and stupid um, program written in TypeScript that is capable of taking a file in the Git database and extract the content to some other file. So I have this command. It's um, an, a utility of mine. Uh, you have a help. And I can point the utility to the right files into the git internal database i ask to the operation inflate and i ask to put the output file in this new file so basically i can copy this file i'm asking to my utility to get the files taken from the git internal database and expand to see what's really inside the file and i can now open a file and i can go to file system, TMP, inflated, and uh, Visual Studio Code tells me that the editor is someone, it, the file is someone binary, but I can open with the text editor standard because I want to show you that the file is nothing else than a header, and the header will identify in Git that this file, this um, binary file contains a blob, so it contains a stream of byte. Basically, it's the compressed version of a file. Then I have the length of the original file followed by a null character at zero, and then the original content of the file. So you can see that the original content, it's, um, it's here. This confirms us that Git does nothing else than taking a stream of byte, calculating the length, creating a header with blob, space, length of the file, then you create, then it put a null character at zero, and then followed by the stream of byte. When Git created this blob, it calculate, it calculate the hash, the SHA1 of this um, binary, the resulting binary blob, and then it used this hash to write the file on internal database. So this will confirm us that Git is doing nothing else than taking a file binary stream, taking the length, prepending a header, and calculating the hash and writing to the internal database. If we come back to the original repository, we can use another internal git commands to show the content of a blob file inside internal git database. So if I can, I, I can use git cat file dash t type as an example, and I, I'm asking git to um, give me, oops, it copied too much data. Give me the type of the object stored inside this ID. And it tells me that it's a blob, and it, I know that it's a blob because I've compressed the file and I can use git cut file dot p and as you can see this will cut me the original content of the file so I don't need to resort to some custom written utility if I want to examine what's inside an internal database object in git so I can take every object inside the database use cat file dash t to understand which kind of object is stored inside that entry or I can use cat file dash p to print the content of that entry as a final 
example, I don't need to specify the whole content of the, the whole SHA1 identity of the object because I can use six character or more depending if the first six character are enough to automatically identify a one single commit. So if I'm asking to cat file dash p ad zero e for one, if there's no other um, internal object that start with the six characters, it is are uh, it is going to work um, without any problem. As a final proof, I've come back into the directory where I have my basic file operation TypeScript file, and I can create a um, new operation that this time it's called hash. So I'm going to create with TypeScript the very same operation that Git is doing when it compresses a file. So I take the readme to markdown, this new file that was created onto the original folder. I've modified the file so it contains a log two to create a new blob object. And I'm calling my utility in TypeScript, telling to write the result of the object in TMP directory. And it tells me that it created a file with this hash. So it, the output is very similar to git hash object, as you can see. And it's entirely written in TypeScript. You can see how it works. But basically, it simply does what hash file do. Take the content of the file, prepend on header, and then calculate the hash and compress. Now I can go to my... TMP folder and I see that indeed it contains that file. I'm not going to open and I'm going to do an operation that you should never do in real life. I'm inside the git, the dot git internal git database and I can create a new folder. Remember the first two character of the folder should be the first two character of the blob, the SHA1, so EC and I create and I'm going inside the EC and I'm going to take this file and move to this directory. And then you should remember that the first two letter of the file should be removed because they are part of the directory. So I rename the file and if I'm going back to my original um, repository, I now have another piece of um, piece of object binary inside the database of Git, but this time I've created this object with a TypeScript solution made of mine. So it's my custom code and it shows you that Git is doing nothing special. And as you can see, I've already tested this, but I can show you another time. I use the git cat file dash p to print the content of the ec6f62 file and indeed Git find that it is a valid git object. So git basic work is really simple. And I have demonstrated you writing a simple TypeScript file with 78, nine lines of code that can basically extract and compress a git, um, an object in the same format as git uses internally.